Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Wesley Hamilton. This is another episode of Out of the Shadows. Um, I'm here with my guest today, which is Vanessa Ayala. Um, and man, we're just really going to talk about art, culture, and all things that represent who we are. And the most important part, at least for me, is identity. I think that that's just a powerful word that a lot of people don't use. And from just looking at content from Vanessa recently. And I just think that's a strong topic that has been been pushed. And so I really Thank want you. to speak about that and really um, figure out what's your narrative around it. But what's up, Vanessa? How are you? Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's good to see you. It's been so long. It it's has. been really long, probably a couple of years, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's, for having you know, me, thank you for inviting me. For people that might not know, like I've I've definitely known Vanessa um, prior to my accident. Um, Twenty backstory. Like seriously, like it's just been forever. I, I yeah, it's like, been like what 15, <laughs> more than ten years, maybe. Oh, it's been yeah. I yeah. was in middle. I feel like I was in middle school going to high school when we actually first met. So. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Cause I was barely 15 years old. Yeah. yeah Damn, I was barely 15. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you've grown up with people and maybe paths have changed. You went out and lived life and you get to sit back and watch somebody that you know from your past and see them evolving and coming into their purpose. And it becomes something that you know, you you just, you're motivated and inspired by, and I feel that way about your story because I've seen you grow, right? Like, so let's just kind of get right into that. Um, as I've, I've seen you grow, um, and, and I guess we could start with like, you know, who are you, what do you do? So people can actually understand what this conversation is going to be around. So I'm a visual artist at Yala. I go by Ayala. Even in high school, everyone called me Ayala. But uh, I'm a visual artist. I have been painting for whew, maybe more than 10 years, 15 years, since forever. And I've been all over the place. I've had a lot of support in New York. I've had a lot of support uh, from female entrepreneurs. And they were sort of like the backbone of how my business got started. And now I'm a full-time I call it entrepreneur, and and it's ama It's been amazing. I've been able to just create original work. I've been diving into art that that embraces representation, and I really kind of want to create artwork that has more of like feminine energy and just like I call it the divine feminine. And it's just been like driving my work full force. Oh, I love that. Um... <laughs> I mean, I love all of that because you embody art. So it seems like, you know, everything around you, even your business model speaks mm -hmm. art, you know, entrepreneur, right? Like <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's powerful. Um, so how long have you been, you know, passionate about art? I feel like, um, well, my father is, um, an, he's an amazing artist. He's actually a wood carver. And I, and I, from a young age, I remember seeing him work and create all these beautiful, like floral designs. And I feel like I kind of had whatever he had, like his artistic gift since a, a really young age. So I would always draw. And then luckily by the grace of God, like in high school, I was able to go to a performing arts high school, which was Paseo. And that just changed my whole life. So like from 15 and on, forget it. Like it was just like art forever, nonstop. This is my life. This is the best thing ever. But what was funny is that I kind of, I went, I ended up going to art college, but then I, I quit painting. I quit mm -hmm. art for a very long time because I got, I just got a little bit uh, discouraged of where my purpose was in all of that. And everything's meant to be, because they always say that like life makes sense backwards but I learned graphic design, I learned animation, I learned, um, I was even like messing with music and stuff. And it just, it's funny how like, in modeling, all of it ties into like what the business is now. You know what I mean? Like knowing how to edit, knowing how to sell yourself as a, as a business or your business and, and all of it ties in together. So I, I just feel like I've always been, I've always been pulled towards anything artistic. 
mm. all like in film and anything that's creative. And I think most creative people can understand that or have this thing in common. Like we want to try everything because it's so fascinating, but but it all came back to where I started, which is the art, which is yeah. I'm I'm grateful for because I made like a full circle here. <laughs> No, I love that. Um, you know, when you think about uh, just one, like all the, no, I, I think like, at least for me, ever since I've known you, you were into art. And I like the fact of you sharing being discouraged at times, mm -hmm. because I think we all start to pursue a certain path, but sometimes that path, oh, let me get my camera right, yeah. Sometimes that path um, can be, um, the way I want to put it is like, sometimes that path isn't actually your path, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so say like art. I'm not putting words in your mouth or anything, but just necessarily when you look at your art, it's so visual, it's vibrant, it has a direction, it has a purpose. And so some people get into art and maybe they're just drawn. Right. Like and maybe they're just drawing things that really, you know, th they could have something more inside of them. But it's more of the simplistic things. It's the things mm -hmm. that society wants, but it's not actually your narrative when it comes to art. And when I see you, you've actually created a narrative towards your art, like your art speaks something um, that is above the norm. Right. Like it takes away now when people look at your work it actually speaks purpose. And so like, you know, I mean, yeah, y'all have to follow Vanessa on a lot of her, her social media and things, and we'll make sure that we share that. But, you know, some of the recent jobs that I've seen you work with, like Coca-Cola and Comcast, it seems that not only did they want to hear your story, they asked, you know, for you to have like, to yeah. create a piece and and so like talk about that of like how does that make you feel to to know that like this creative process that you have came up with is now really like catching a lot of people eyes and they want that they don't just want your story they want that i i think that when when you create work and this is i think in any field but well, I feel like I put a lot of my soul into what I do. I'm not just like throwing stuff together and just like calling it a day. You know, like I feel like I put so much time, literally time and effort into and thought and concept into every single piece that I really feel like when you put that much energy into something, it just it just reads to people's souls or spirits or energies or something like that. And I honestly feel like, I, I, it's the best, it's the, it's to very time consuming, but it's the best thing that I've been able to put in my work. And I appreciate that. I really do feel that people feel connected to it that way. Like they, they really feel that sense of, of detail or attention to detail and not just like in the way how it feels like the, the drawing and everything, but the whole picture together, like it just, mm -hmm. it resonates. And I think that, um, I, I always kind of try to share like a little bit of the concept, which is probably the biggest part of it too. Like I really like to share like where the ideas come from, what made me think of uh, putting all these different elements together to make one piece of artwork. And, and I, that's one of the biggest things that my art college taught me. It wasn't about so much about what things looked like, but it was how or what concept did you come up with to make an image mm -hmm. what it is and i think that that i think that's like a little thing that i i might have um that other artists may not may not have picked up as much that you see because a lot of i feel like a lot of artists or a lot of entrepreneurs they're like um self-taught which is amazing you know what i mean but at the same time like there's a few little things that when you actually study fine art and things like that that you that you take with you that may not be as important or may not be as noticed um, for other other artists. So I would say that that's that's probably another one of the biggest things, and it makes me feel proud to share it and and that other people respond. No, I love that. You know, knowledge is power, um, mm -hmm. and so you know, as you shared earlier, tapping into different things to try to perfect your craft and being able to go back and get to it. 
Um, it's the same way as studying more of the lane that you're in, mm -hmm. getting into the books and educating yourself because there is content. There's power in being self-taught, but there's even more power in actually understanding what you have taught yourself. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. And so I'm I'm a firm believer that, you know, there is enough knowledge in the world for us to continue to be better every day. Oh, so yeah. even though you're teaching yourself, you know, you should go and explore whatever type of literature or something that's out there. Rather, it's a, a course that you could take for six months or six weeks, like perfect your craft, learn your lane and elevate it. Right. Um, yeah. Most so, definitely, I feel like that every day. I don't mean to cut you off, but no, I just feel like I, I kind of, I feel like I've been doing the reverse. So it's like I spent so much time learning and, and like studying art. And now it's like I have to learn and study the business side. <laughs> it's like, now I really need some courses and stuff. But, you know, at the end of the no. day, it's like it's a learning process, right? Business, you know, but that's the thing about business, too. You know, um, I think some of the, the the world of business wasn't shared with a lot of communities um, to the point, to, mm -hmm. to the way that it is now. Right. And so there are certain groups and communities that have, that know business from the back of their hand, right? Like, and, and it's- Or passed down from it's generation, generation. generations. Generations. And then you have individuals like you and I that are exploring something that is setting up for the generations after us. Yeah. Yeah, in a right. way, we're like, what, the generational, what do they call it, generational? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, we're the first generation that, yeah, that's going to create. Entrepreneur. Yeah. And that, that's a really big deal. And it, and it's it just kind of reminds me of, like, why I even got discouraged in art in the beginning, because I feel like there was no representation from what I saw. I went to art school in San Francisco. So can you imagine, like, how high end, you know, like everything, seeing the galleries and stuff like I, I really at that time, I saw no representation whatsoever. So I, I honestly felt like I didn't really see where I had a voice in this world. And I kind of tapped out and made my own thing happen for a while. But it's funny to 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 come full circle and, and, and understand that, OK, just because I didn't see representation at that time doesn't mean that well, that means that I have so much more of a window to be a voice now. Yeah, we have to be the change we wish to see in the world. Um, one of my favorite quotes I always say is that I'm the representation that I couldn't find. Yeah, and... I love that. <laughs> I saw that when you when you had shared that. Um, that's, and, that's and I, think, I think that's that's you, right? Like you explore something. We get discouraged. I got discouraged not seeing people representing the lanes that I'm trying to be in. And then it was the power that you get from it of knowing that, but there are so many people that need to see somebody. And if I've already understood and acknowledged that there's no one, no positive representation, I think the job is mine. Right. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, the job is mine. Maybe well, I'm understanding that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I just, it's power in knowing that you can be the one that you wanted to look up to. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. it, right? Um, but so also, I think I saw somewhere that it said something like, you know, being being original or being in your your original, how, how was it that they said it? It was something like, instead of being like uh, the best or something, like be original. And and that's like putting yourself in your in your own lane, and no one can no one can touch you if if you do that. And I and I feel like that really stayed with me because I was just like, of course, you know, when you when you do something, you try to be like as as good as you can be. But yeah. then I started thinking, like, especially when it came to the art, like being a a voice of representation in my own way, like my own voice. It's like you you definitely are in your own lane. You know what I mean? Just as much as you are in your own lane. I think yeah. that's great. I I had made a I think I made a post this morning on on like my Twitter feed or something. I said, you know, once you're able to own your story, no one can be you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's because you know your story and your lived experiences aren't something someone else can like duplicate. You know, and so you've been able to take ownership of that. Um, it creates your own lane because you actually know how hard it got, how hard it took for you to get there that nobody can actually follow that journey, 
Like yeah. they can't they can't go through the emotions you went through when you were down and out and discouraged. And they right. can't they, they don't know what sparked the fire for you to get back up there. Right. Like right. instead, visually, I see success and maybe that's what I'm a chase. But if I if but the story is where the success was came out of and that's something that no one can can write right like that's your own story and so once you understand that it creates such power within you um and so yeah be original and being original means that you're not perfect you're just yeah. you yeah right? like so let's talk you know talk about that a little bit of because i think about art right like and i think about you know <laughs> i'm gonna just shift it a little bit but like if everything isn't perfect, right? Like, have you ever had experience of like your artwork, right? Like how somebody else might have thought it was perfect, but you saw the flaws in it and, all the time. All and the time. how do you be able to find a way to accept it and know that that piece is still beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can tweak my paintings till the end of days like i will always i feel like i can always find something to tweak and i'll just be like there and then you know you really have to stop yourself i guess it's like the the artist you have to also have like an, an editing eye or knowing when to stop because sometimes they're really or stepping away from it obviously there's so many there's so many things that are beautiful in all the imperfections so stepping away from it and coming back with a fresh eye, I feel like you really you really start seeing it in a different way every single time. And so, yeah, I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that happens a lot, but it's it's really, really good sometimes to I wonder, you know, it's a really good question because I don't even know when that started. But I feel like somehow I learned how to see the, the beauty and the imperfections. And I'm not really sure how that happened, but I think it just comes with practice. Like when you do consistently do something all the time, you you can kind of like appreciate appreciate it in its most minimal form. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. No. But <laughs> I, so when you say that, because this was like a life lesson for anybody that's not even like understanding why I threw that out. It's because it, it definitely to me is a life lesson until I was able to kind of start to look in the mirror, go back, go back in the mirror. I still seen the same thing, but I had to see it differently, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. I had to see myself differently. I embraced the imperfections, which made me accept that I wasn't perfect, but I could make myself better, right? Like, and so I think like when people look at, or at least for me, when I look at art, I'm always looking at it with a different eye because it's going to be different than the artist themselves. But there's, to me, I feel like, the pictures are perfect, but there's no perfect picture. Yeah, yeah, mo most definitely. I like, <laughs> I like that. That was a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so like, no, that that's that's so good to just for people to understand that and people to get like everything isn't going to be perfect, but you do. You take a step back, you go back and you look, and then you step take a step back again. You go back and you look, and sometimes there are things that you'll edit, and then there might be things that you just find a way to accept. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't fix this anymore as much as I can make this look better. Mm -hmm. right? Like, and making this look better makes this look even more perfect, and. Yeah, so that's the creative, um, the creative ability. So thinking of that, um, like your influence of culture, how you've been bringing it out, you, you know, you, you talk about just being proud of, you know, really yeah. understanding your identity, right? Like, and so to me, like, speak about identity. Um, why is your identity so important to you, um, now, right? Like, and and how is that actually? How how are you making that in, be an influence to your artwork? I love that question. I feel like I've been, I've been answering this question for a long time now. <laughs> so let me see if I can try to tackle the answer. <laughs> but I obviously so <clears throat> for those who may not understand um for people that are born into what's known as like latino culture it's not a race it's a culture 
And it comes from so much history of mainly like this is the key points is like native people in the Americas, what we know as the Americas now and the Spanish conquest and the mixture of the African diaspora. So what I always say or what I usually say is that like Latino culture is the result of how black and brown people survived colonization. And this is kind of interesting because the, it, racially, they say that, um, you know, not not a lot of, um, well, there's no, there's no race. So like, if you say like, oh, this person looks Latino, you can't really say that because a lot of people that identify with Latino culture are um, mixed race, right? So a few years ago, and I always kind of knew that my family was native and we had some kind of like indigenous ancestry, but I, I was curious to see what the actual numbers were. Cause I, I didn't know like if there was more <laughs> mixed in us or something, but I was surprised to see how high the numbers were, which is damn near like 80% native, wow. right? So just, you know, within the culture, there's so much, there's so much internal oppression that even families like my own or so many other families, nobody truly embraces being native um, unless they're like awakened, you know what I mean? But within the culture, there's so much, there's so much oppression that, that it's almost, um, what would you say? It's like shameful, almost shameful to be native or to, to identify as being native. And so when I think about my family only specifically, I think about how in a way we were born into what's known as the Latino culture, but all that we really are like, you know, so much that has to do with, with race is so, um, there's just so many little things that that are just innate. And I say like wearing bright colors or like, I remember being a little girl and being drawn to doing like beadwork. And I feel like this is like an innate connection to like the ancestors without mm -hmm. even having to know or, you know, like to be introduced to your own people or your own culture. It's like, it's in you. It's going to be a part of you because it's, that's what you are. You know what I mean? So it's funny because I feel like I had been on this journey for a long time of self-discovery where it's more so like, I would, I appreciate, while I appreciate, you know, all of the support that I've gotten throughout um, the Latino community, because Obviously, I'm I'm born into this community. Like we, I speak Spanish. Like I understand all the little innuendos and the jokes and the songs and and the art and you know people can can relate to me in that way. But I see a bigger thing here where so many people don't even identify with being native. Mm. And to me, that's such that's such a huge problem because it's like not only have we been stripped completely from any type of culture or or identifying with who we are but <laughs> there's no there's no representation whatsoever when it comes to like you know what you you can identify or you you should identify <laughs> um as being native first mm -hmm. you know what I mean? because that's what we are <laughs> and and I feel like within the artwork, it just started to to like resonate with me more and just come out even bigger because there is such a lack of representation. I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of representation when it comes to what I call like northern um, indigenous or native um, because there seems to be a little bit more. Um, there has to, I feel like in TikTok and stuff like that, there's been a little bit of support with uh, native representation, but people who are actually like um, connected to cultural um, heritage. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that identify with Latino culture who are native, who are not, I, we, they, it's called detribalized, that don't get a voice because we have been completely stripped <clears throat> from any type of culture. So, supposedly there's this like there's this thing where you can't identify as native because you don't have that you know that that cultural connection but in a way it's just 
it's like you can't take that away too you know what i mean like no so in in art and in representation i really really want to be able to create a voice you know especially for women um embrace that identity and bring bring up the conversation because it's so important it is so important and i feel like if i would have had a little bit of that direction when i was younger it would have made me it would have made me f- understand things a little bit better because i i was really confused like can you imagine yeah. like you know your family like not telling you like who you are and you seeing like native people but you don't understand that that's what you are there is no representation whatsoever and it is it's i'm like very passionate about it sorry no like <laughs> it, it, this this speaks to me you know like because goodness identity and the power of it and i know for me I'm just now owning my identity in the last few years of being a black man first. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I took ownership of the disability, but I had never owned who I was before my disability. And it's similar to what you're saying of like being brought into the world and your identity already being stripped away. Right. Or just told what you were. Yeah. It's yeah. It's the, the narrative that you were directed and then what was, portrayed or put into your parents and their parents, you know, and and as you know, generations, and we think about, you know, generations, there, we have more access to knowledge and content these days for us to actually find our identities or, or be more knowledgeable of how history used to be. But I always say like what my mom and them know, I'm teaching my mom and my dad things today. And, you know, and if, their parents were still alive. I'm de- I, I know that I would probably be showing them something different as well, because during their time period, a lot of knowledge and information was held back from them. So them trying to find an identity or think that it was different than what they were used to, it wasn't. So like for us to be brought up into this world, we were brought up with just the, the information that they had. And over time, as we start to evolve and the world becomes something different, we started to feel lost. Mm-hmm. You know, like, well, this isn't me, right? Like, this doesn't speak me. I'm doing all of these things, but I'm living my life like this person that has no relation or, or relatability to my lifestyle. Right. They can't come to my house and 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 sit at the table and understand the way that we're about to eat dinner, right? Like, because they don't understand it, but I'm living my life based on the same way they're living theirs. Mm-hmm. That's their identity. And I'm just speaking from the sense of when you don't have an identity, you, you gravitate and you start to see other cultures. Some cultures actually have an identity where, as we spoke about business earlier, there's so many things that's taught within generations that we might be lost in here in this this era, but most people, you know, certain cultures, they aren't lost. They are they have figured it out. They have been right. doing the building blocks. And so we're finding ourselves at this time. And it, like you said, it is important to push it out. And it is important to know your identity because that allows purpose to actually speak more. Yeah. I you like know? that. <laughs> well, I yeah. like I like that you like my little quotables. That's what, <laughs> I, that's what okay. my friends always they always try to tell me. Um, like I always have these quotables. So, of course, my show is called Out of the Shadows, and and I love like this conversation because I'm learning a lot more about you myself, and I think that these things can always be brought more to light. Um, mm-hmm. So. I was listening to a video that you were you did of an interview and you said um step outside of the box that you yeah. were going into. Yes. Right? <laughs> and so I feel like that's what we were just talking about. But mm-hmm. um when you got when you finally got out of that box, right? Like when you yeah. finally announced as you are an artist, as you are an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, um <laughs> like what have been some of the challenges now that you face because you are going against a certain identity, right? Yeah, most definitely. That is such a huge question. 
And it's kind of like you said, it's like, you know, you think about your parents or I think the hardest thing is coming back home, if that makes sense. Like when you when you have to be around like the inner circle, sometimes they haven't you weren't able to take them with you on this journey that you've been on. So little by little to have to share those things with them. Sometimes it's like you won't be able to get through. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like I try to I try to share a little bit here and there. Um, and it may not be understood or absorbed or accepted, but I think, I think a, a big challenge is to like, to maybe build a, a, another inner circle, if that makes sense of, you know, people that are like-minded and, and step into a different phase because I know that, that even now, like in, in within my own family, there is, like I said, that that internal oppression that sometimes gets broken down a little bit, but I still see it. And it makes me very sad, but it also kind of pushes me to continue to do the work that I do because it's just very mm -hmm. important and it's, and it's needed in this world. I think, I, but that's important to even share um, that you do have to create a new circle. I do feel like if I didn't have the circle that I I confide with at times, share ideas with, I I don't know where I would be or how I would feel because you do have to have someone, at least it's good to have someone around you that kind of gives you confirmation that, yes, it's hard. This direction that you're on is, is different. It's not, a, people, it's not relatable to the people around you. Right. Um, but culturally. It, is destined for you, right? Like, and what you're able, that's the hard part, being a vessel, right? Like that's the hard part is because I feel like we are the vessels. If we don't do the work, it's not going to get done, um, you know, and- And it's funny that you said that because I always make a joke about the vessel. Like I always like, sometimes like as women, like we critique ourselves the way how we look, you know, and I'll like, I'll like look in the mirror and I'll be like, Oh, vessel, like you know, <laughs> my soul talking to my vessel, like oh, vessel, <laughs> or like good morning, vessel. And it's just funny because, like, I am, I know, I understand that I am a vessel. Like, this is my meat suit, and I am a a soul talking, like it through yes, this. Yes, so, <laughs> it just happens to be my meat soul, and this is what it looks like, and. And this is what I'm drawn to. And this is, you know, where my life has gone, you know, <laughs> and oh, it's just interesting. <laughs> that is so, oh, listen, man, I talk about Vessel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I don't feel like it's, it's relatable. So I think for us. I think a lot of people are, maybe are kind of understanding that now so much mm -hmm. more because it's like I, I talk to people and even like, you know, my own family and I'd be like, you are so much more than this alone. You know what I mean? Like you are that spiritual soul inside of you. Like yeah. you can do the next thing. Or it's like, sometimes I feel like people really do get so wrapped up in the physical and it's like, you know, I don't know if you've seen my, my artwork with like the whole third eye and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, love I feel that. like it's, it, it goes a little bit deeper than that. You know what I mean? Like it really just is about like your inner self and like in tapping into, you know, the spiritual awakening of that. When people think about my story and they look at a lot of people always ask, like, what was the shift? What was this? And what was that? It was, and it's, it goes back to looking in the mirror, looking at your imperfections. Like when you realize that your, your body isn't perfect. Like for me, like being paralyzed made me have to accept like my body is not the way that I think normal should be. Or but at the same time, my mind is even way more than what I ever thought it could be. Yeah. And so what it's can I do with that? that? <laughs> That's actually an incredible thing. I mean, like, I know that the way how you just verbalized it is like, I think that people kind of understood that a little bit, but for you to, to just verbalize, like, you know, now it's like, okay, this mind is like the real muscle. You know what I mean? Like, this is the exactly. real thing that I have to be exercising all the time. And that's crazy. Like if I could create this life with this mind alone mm -hmm. that my legs couldn't do, mm -hmm. then how important is the physical body 
as right. much as the mind and what can the mind and where can the mind lead you? Where what can the mind create for you? And how do you find yourself being here even when you aren't anymore? And a lot of people don't understand the power of that. But like for me, it's like your mind creates your legacy. Your legacy is how it creates a ripple effect for generations, right? Like when you think about when we talk about George Washington or Ben Franklin, like these people created legacies. They're not here on this earth anymore, but they had understood of a vessel that they were using to create a, such a large impact by them being themselves and following their passion that now they're still here on this earth. Mm hmm. Right. Like and, I, and and so it's like when you do understand that you're a vessel, it's like, man, spiritually, I've always been here. I might not have known what what form or shape that I actually had came at first, but this is the form and shape that I'm in now. So every time I'm looking in the mirror, I'm like I look at my body a lot and I'm just I get I get it on. I'm uplifted. I'm proud. Like I get excited about looking at my image in the mirror. Because mm -hmm. I see how powerful I am with the limitations that most people accept first. Wow. Mm -hmm. And 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 and, and under, understanding that makes you really understand the power of being a vessel, and that all of us. And so I always tell people, I'm like, people could do everything all day, and they live in this perfect world. But what happens when you're when something alters your body? What happens when your life alters? What happens when you get the, the diagnosis from a doctor? Like sometimes these are tests for you to actually understand that you are more powerful than what is being shared with you. There's someone that can't see in this world, but is moving around like they have vision. There's somebody that can't hear, but they're listening to everything people are saying. There's power in the things that we we can push past, right? Like there's power in understanding that our bodies are literally just that but yeah. the power of the mind takes you to realms outside of this earth right like and that's just real but until yeah. you start to listen to your like i always tell people like my subconscious guides me into the way that i live my life now like mm -hmm. i literally listen to my mind and that voice that i used to hear that i always question that voice always told me to make the right decisions <laughs> i just never listened to it and now that i've listened to it i find myself very successful in my life. I find myself very healthy in the way that I want to be. Oh, I find yeah. myself following my own purpose and passion because I started to listen to the inner voice inside of me instead of worrying about the outside voices that judge me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right? really inspiring. I was curious, was there a book that you read that kind of kicked it all off for you or was it more so just like you just really started to tap into just like self re self evaluating after, uh, you know, definitely a lot of books. I'm I'm a I'm an avid reader now, um, you know, and I didn't. I thought you had posted some like a few books, and I remember <laughs> like, oh yeah, I think I read that one, and it was just like I was just curious if that's how it happened for you. I think too. I always say that I I had a level of awareness, right? We all have that level that awakening period, and so I think me becoming self aware, um, and had created this awakening period, but becoming more awakened made me start to explore different, rather was podcasts or literature that spoke these things. And one of my favorite individuals is Dr. Joe Dispenza that talks about like getting out of your body. Um, he has a yeah. book. Um, I read that. Um, how to, how to break the habit of become, being of being yourself. yourself. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Wee. Wee. That one. It was so <laughs> yeah. I think I think a lot of his literature allows you to just think beyond your physical body. It mm -hmm. makes you take into manifestation even more. It makes mm -hmm. you be more intentional about your words. I mean, I think that was it. Like for me, I started to guide myself into to books and things that I didn't feel really represented me, but it shared a level of knowledge that would allow me to figure out who I was. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and so how to own your own mind by Napoleon Hill was another one. And um, I always tell people like, I read that book before I really even became who I am. And there was a passage in there that said, 
of course, you know, think about old literature. So don't 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 knock the, the way that they put it. But it was like, I know, yeah, right. It's like you know, the the man that wants to convert his his life from poverty to riches is similar to a farmer trying to convert his a forest into a productive field. And I think that always sat with me when I when I think about success in a journey, mm -hmm. because, it, it, you know, this is a philosopher. This is someone that literally just gave you a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Life isn't going to be easy and you're going to have to face some type of journey to get to where you want to be or to even become who you want to be. Right. Like you're going to be tested in so many different ways. But at the same time, it's following that path and understanding that if I'm going to be something that I haven't become before, or there's it's not trickled down generational. Right. Then I might have to chop down some branches. I might have to clear a field. I might have to get some some you know some tools to get these weeds and stuff out so that I can start to make it. And then I have to figure out what season is proper for me to plant the seed. Mm -hmm. Right. Like and see, so it goes, and, and so that's what I kind of got from that was like. Man, there's such a process in knowing you. Mm -hmm. But when you figure out that process, what happens is not only do you become awakened, not only do you find your identity and you own it, you now become an influence to other people. Now you become an organic impact, right? Like, mm -hmm. I always feel like when you know yourself, you're impacting people organically. It's not force. It's a lived experience, baby. I know who I am, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so just thinking of that, like, in what ways, you know, do you do you feel or do you hope that your artwork and your message be around your artwork um, inspires and impacts the world? I, I mean, <laughs> well, well, hold on. <laughs> I would. I just wanted to like. There was like a lot that you said there that was really, really. <laughs> well said and i just want to say that i i really can understand and agree with everything that you said i think that's that's such a powerful such a powerful journey that you've been on to even be able to share all of that but um i guess when it comes to when it comes to what i would want to leave or like people to share what was the question again it was like to for people to sh uh yeah, so like, how, in what ways would you hope like your artwork and like your message around that could inspire and impact a lot of people's lives around the world? So, I feel like I'm still I'm still kind of figuring out what that is, but I do feel like by two two things mainly. One of them is like this this idea of of creating a voice of representation um, and feminine energy, what I call like the divine feminine. And another would be a little bit of like what you just said is like kind of like tapping into yourself or like your soul. Um, I asked you earlier, like if there was a book that that kind of like started, kicked it off for you. And in a way it kind of, that's what happened to me where like I had read a book, which was like the power of positive thinking, which is also like old literature. <laughs> like you know, like that's how they were talking back then. Right. But, but the main thing that stayed with me was like following things that you are naturally drawn to, right? Or like, what is it that you want in this world? And that completely changed my life because it was like, I don't think I ever really, really asked myself, what do you want? Or what are the things that you're, that you're, that your intuition is calling? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like one thing that I would love to, leave with people or for when I speak to people to for them to take with them is that same idea of like you know the my my life has taken me to following art as my purpose but it's because I listened you know to like you said that little intuition voice when you listen to that thing it kind of leads you towards your purpose and mine just happens to be art but for other people, I would love to challenge them to to think, to take a moment and think like, you know, what are the innermost truthful things that I'm drawn to and, and to have the courage to follow those things, because most often it will lead you 
to something that has a purpose or your path in this life. And I really do feel like we all have a gift in one way or another. We really do because we're human beings are just so incredible. And it's just so sad that society in general doesn't support um, that type of spiritual awakening as a culture. And I hope that it's going to shift, um, you know, in general, just like, I kind of feel like there's a tiny baby shift happening, but there's still so much, there's so much, yeah. growth, you know, there's so much room left for growth. No, like, I, I mean, I love the way that you put that, but I think um, you, you kind of nailed it though. Um, it's living I always tell people it's just living your life, living your life in the direction that you you want, following your purpose. You impact people organically. Like I'm I'm impacted by your life, right? Like and and I'm impacted not just because I've I've known you, but it's it's even a, even more stronger because I've known you and watched your journey. But I I'm not an artist. I'm not gonna go grab a canvas and and paint. Good. Right. Like, but at the same time, you following your passion makes me continually follow mine. Right. 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 So it's kind of like going back to what you're saying. It's like you going after your dreams. Yes, it can inspire artists to follow that same purpose, but hopefully it it inspires the person that might not can resonate with your actual purpose, but can see someone actually pursuing theirs and know that, hey, whatever is in my soul, let me go pursue it like this person. And this person is doing it by <clears throat> being their own photographer, videographer, sometimes right. sound artist, right? Like that's the yeah. journey, right? Yeah. Like it's not the results that you see, it's, it's how I've created these results. And can I plant that seed in you for you to go after your dreams the same way? I you think know? That's, that's a really good point to make too, is that I've, I've like kind of picked up on a little bit is, is continuing to create those opportunities for yourself or like creating these things is, is a challenge in itself. Um, and it's also a skill, don't you think? Right. To like create these types of opportunities or create pathways for yourself because nobody's going to do it for you. You know, like you got to, you got to fi figure it's, something out. <laughs> no, and it's the power of manifestation and it's the power of knowing you, right? Like, because once you know and believe yourself, believe your path and your purpose, when you manifest, man your manifestations become, have a better effect of becoming real because you believe so much in your life already. Right. Like and so like when I think about my life and I think about even what I've been on, you know, like we talked earlier about just traveling and being able to not be in one place because we we you know, we're serving all these different areas coast to coast. Right. Like it, and, and it's because like. I guess when you when you see it in in, in such a, a bigger way. I think it just all. Let me try to get my train of thought. But I think it like it all just hones hones back into like that. I don't know, it's just that purpose driven, knowing that one area isn't where you are, but you have this impact mm -hmm. everywhere you go, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm not even stationed in one place, but I believe in my life so much that yeah. I know that my impact can guide me anywhere. I always tell people like I'm in LA and I'm I'm like <clears throat> I'm like, I know I have a house on the hill. I just don't know where it is yet. Right, right. I don't exactly. speak like I want it. I know that it's already there. And even if it's going to be a vacation home, because that's how I'm manifesting it, I'm not going to be in it forever. But I speak with in intention. I speak knowing that it is already ex existing. I'm just, I just have to guide myself to that. And how do I guide myself to that? Is by believing and then manifesting. But you have to believe in your journey. You have to believe that whatever you see as that end result, even if you haven't made it yet, every day you wake up, you're pursuing that journey. You're pursuing that destination, right? And that's what I see with you. And that's why I see like the impact. So just- Oh, I feel very inspired because, you know, <laughs> You don't hear those things a lot, you know, just from people in your, I would say, you know, like, just like in our circle, like you yeah. don't hear that. And I feel like that's really important 
to, to just for me to, to listen to. And I, I can really say that I feel inspired by that because no. I was just talking about that the other day. I was just talking about like, you know, the whole believing in yourself and, you know, it's, it's harder than it, it it's harder than what it seems really, because there yeah. are some, so many uh, times, especially as an artist, you know, you are very critical. I think in general, creative people can be very critical and, and sometimes it's like, you just have to stop and say like, you know, like I, I do believe that this is, you know, this is what this is worth and, and this is what it is. And, and that is definitely yeah. something that I'm going to take away from. <laughs> yeah. from it's a good uh, reminder. It's a really good reminder. I think it's like, yeah, it, 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 it is. Know what's for you and then just do the work. And man, and that belief, that belief is strong. Like I believe in my life. I believe in what I'm creating, even if it's not in existence in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, and what I've seen is everything come into, ex like come into reality. You know, even yeah. LA was once manifested. Oh, I'm gonna I'm go to LA. I'm gonna live in LA, but I'm gonna make sure. Like, and now I'm here, right? Like, and I'm going to do this and then that comes. I'm going to have this and then that comes, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't you know come without that, work. It's interesting that you said that because it reminds me of another thing. It reminds me of this. I don't remember where I heard it, but someone said, like, you know, we are constantly um, developing or in this cycle of, like, wanting things, getting it, and wanting more. Wanting mm -hmm. things, getting it, wanting it more. So it's like when you understand that that's like the normal like human uh response that it really really is important to understand how to just really be happy with what is pr in the present yes. and i feel like that's something that i've been thinking about recently of like uh the journey of appreciating the present and what what is in this moment here but not to stop, you know, from like wanting something and then like reaching that goal and continuing that cycle. But I think there is, really is also something powerful in that, you know, like like you said, like yeah. the the manifesting <laughs> part of it. I think, um, <laughs> you know, of course, Dr. Joe Dispenza, that's my guy. I'm gonna drop yeah, bombs. Yeah. But I think he says, like, you know, if we wake up with if we wake up with the vision of the the if we wake up. If we go to sleep with the thoughts of the past, we're going to wake up with the thoughts of the past. If we wake up with a vision of the future, we can live in the present moment and know that we are growing into what we vision for the future. And I know that he said it in a different way, but that's the way that I perceived it was that, yes, live in the present, but never dwell on the past because the past isn't here anymore. But the yeah. future hasn't came yet. So whatever you do in the present, whatever you manifest, whatever you believe will actually start to form the future for you like your future is not created yet it, it's created but the path of your future is up to the thoughts and perceptions that you embody today mm -hmm. i truly believe that too because yeah. my path to my future was different before i became disabled and now the path is focused on the way that i vision and now i'm going in alignment with that which has made me one of the first people in my family to create a level of success. And now I'm lucky to say we'll have a ripple effect for generations after me. Like yeah. that wasn't the path that I had at first. Right. Like, but I would have lived that path that I would have lived going being dead or in jail or whatever I believed in at that time, mm -hmm. because I wasn't seeking more or better, or I didn't believe there was more or better. Mm -hmm. So, um, Oh man. I commend I commend <laughs> I don't think I could say it enough, but I really do. No, yeah. this has been good. Um, we're gonna definitely wrap it up in a second. And so I have like two other questions. We have the last one to kind of be like an icebreaker, but um, of course, like you know my work in a um, you know, disability space, really speaking about diversity and inclusion. Um, what I've learned from you so much is that there's still so much representation needed. Um and and it and is needed in in from all different communities, right? Like, and there are there is a lot of oppression that is formed from generations before us, and yes. so conversations like this does bring that understanding. Um, and so I think I guess my next question, okay, it's like as a as a visual artist who focuses on themes such as native re representation and fem feminine energy. Mm -hmm. 
How do you think your art can be utilized to raise awareness about disability and promote inclusivity within the art world? I think it kind of goes back into what we were talking about, because when I say like divine feminine energy, it's so much like of the spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of like what we were talking about earlier of like your body, you know, is one thing, but your mind is something else. So to keep that idea and that, that belief alive and to share it with people is definitely a way that I feel like how my art could affect this community as well. Yes. Not only this, I'm just like human beings in general, right? Like that is definitely, <laughs> I can see that. Well, I definitely feel like it's helped. I think that, you know, your art is therapeutic. Um, when you play around with your colors and things, I don't know if people ever told you that, but it does capture the eye. It brings like a level of warmth and, and feel, right? Like, and just so y'all know, I'm I'm definitely an investor in art. This is one of her pieces behind yeah. me that I asked to be custom. So it wasn't full of all the colors, but she did do it in the sense of what I wanted and which I loved. And this has been years ago. I um, love that one. <laughs> it was it was a few years ago. So much for your support then. So you know, it's it's things like that, right? Like, and so I feel like even gonna, me. Si oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, go ahead. What, what? No, no. I was just gonna like say, so, you know, kind of like what a little bit of what you said earlier of like, you know, the colors and stuff. I really do feel like it. It's like an innate connection to the ancestors because I feel like if you look at um, native uh art or anything like the 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 regalia that they would wear or in, even like black and brown people ancient like we yes. would wear colorful things like we are vibrant you know what i mean like that is just in our nature to be colorful and i feel like it just comes out like it comes out in the work and it's like you're feeling that color you know you're feeling the ancestors yeah <laughs> Uh huh. And if y'all, if if anybody ever know, you put on some fresh color, boy. Listen, you feel good. You, I'm telling you, you I, my favorite color is orange. And a lot of people don't know it until you see it. But you see me in orange a lot, and probably would never know it's my favorite color. But orange really makes me feel good. Um, yeah. No so, um, my last question is, you know, it's to me, it's just really just kind of knock the edge off. It's not really, but right. it's, it's to know like, you know, people that possibly have inspired you um, and maybe why. So anyway, here's the icebreaker. Okay. If, if you could have a dinner party with any three artists, mm -hmm. living or dead, who would they be and why? Living or dead. Oh my God, I think mine's kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, okay, don't laugh. <laughs> One of them will probably be my my living favorite artist right now. His name is Kehinde Wiley. I have always loved his artwork ever since I was in art college. The other one would have to be like Selena Quintanilla, of course. <laughs> um, and I think the third one would maybe be, uh, that's a really good question. Mm. You said living or dead? Oh, or dead. Maybe my grandma. Oh. Because I didn't really get to know her for real because she she lived in Colombia for the majority of my life and then she passed away, unfortunately. But I didn't really get to ask her questions about like what her life was like, what her grandparents were like. Selena, because I just feel like she was just such an incredible icon in so many ways and also like of native ancestry as well. And I also feel like, you know, because my, my artist that I love, Kahindi Wiley, like I just would, want to like tap into his like yeah. concept like where he goes with his artwork and his whole everything but yeah no I love that see that was a good question just to really know like people that inspire you without having to ask who inspires you right like yeah. I just want these three people at the dinner table because I can gain so much and so I think oh. you know to leave this uh with everybody one thanks everybody for watching but you know I challenge everybody to think about what three people would you be surrounded by at the dinner table? What three people influence you so much that they have impacted your life that you want to learn more or even share with them on how you become better because of them? Right. So, again, thanks, everybody. Um, and, yeah, we will share this with all of you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much, Wes, for having me. I, I had a really good time. Absolutely.